everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the cheapest off-brand jackhammer attachment I could find for my skid steer. So let's get into it. So here it is, uh, still in the crate, it's brand new. Uh, I will show you what it is here. It's some weird, I'm guessing probably Chinese something or other, agro tick something, I don't know even how you say it. Here's the uh, model, it's a 680. Um, yeah, there's a, another little label on there. Here's the cereal plate and everything. I mean, it says Austin, Texas. Made in PRC. Tiller at tiller-king.com. Made in 2022. I don't know if you guys can read that. The camera's being kind of funky on. I think it's reflecting off the screen, but I don't know what made in p.r.c is. Um, so anyway, um, so there she is. We have to, in this video, I got to get it out of the crate. We've obviously, we got to get it put together. Um, I think they give you everything. And one of the things that leads me to believe that this is made overseas, because here is our tools box. <laughs> I got a kick out of that. So in our tools box, you can see there's all kind of bolts and hardware and various things. Now, apparently, uh, doing a little research here, this uses uh, a nitrogen charged system. So they give you, uh, I'm hoping that this is full, they give you a little nitrogen tank here. And in there, in that blue box, I believe is the uh, pressure gauge and some hoses, I think, or there's some hoses somewhere, I don't know. Um, I'm hoping we have everything we need to uh, charge the thing. And then there's two chisel bits here. Oh, here you can see the end of them. I think they're both about the same. Uh, hydraulic hoses for the skid steer are back in there. So we've got to get everything out. We've got to get it assembled. And then we have to figure out uh, if we have nitrogen, how to charge the thing and try and do that. And uh, hopefully if all of that goes well, hopefully in this video, we will be able to actually go out and test it, put it on the uh, New Holland there. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to do that. Here's the top of the actual jackhammer itself. So I could make a plate to put on the top of this that would hook to the excavator and you could unbolt the skid steer plate and actually put this on the excavator. It does not require a lot of flow. Um, I don't know if here, hang on. Can you guys read that? 9.5 to 16 gallons per minute is all you need. So uh, my excavator does that without an issue. It falls right in that I think it's 11, 12, or is it 14? I don't know, it falls in that. So the excavator would actually run this too if you needed to reach into something to do it. So anyway, uh, enough talking. Let's get the crate cut off. Let's start getting the pieces and uh, we'll see how this goes. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> according to that paper over there, the working weight on this jackhammer is 900 pounds. So that means these few pieces that we have here to put together uh, are the equivalent of 900 pounds. So they're not gonna be super easy to just, you know, hoss around by hand. Um, so we may end up putting the forks or something on the skid steer to kind of help out and get things bolted up and hooked up. So let's get to it. like decent hoses. We've got our cylinder here. Oh geez, those are those are heavy. Hopefully that means they'll last a while. And now we're down to uh, the hammer itself. Keep going. All right, we're working on getting this thing together. This piece is very heavy. And uh, unfortunately, I do not have a cherry picker or a overhead shop crane. Those are both on my wish list, but we don't have them. So uh, the excavator isn't down here right now either. So we're making do. We were able to get it tipped enough to get, I think we can get a couple of the bolts in the top, just snug them a tiny bit. And then I think we'll be able to tip the plate up, uh, tip the skid steer up and get all the other holes to line up. So that's what we're working on right now. 
uh, trying to do that. Working on hydraulic hoses here, and uh, most of these off brand attachments give you the flat face couplers and stuff, but this one did not, so we had to get those. So we've got basically an adapter here we got to put in, and uh, then we got to put our flat face on, so we're going to do that now. All right, got the roll pin out, now we can lift this other main pin out of here. You can see it has that groove in it. I believe that's where the roll pin goes across. So now we can open this other bit here. It's kind of like an aluminum foil. All right, so we got that opened up. So if you can see here, there is a groove here. So I believe when we put this in, we have to put it with the groove so that this pin slides down in there and that's what holds that on so i've never done this before but we're gonna give it a shot here i think we just shove it up in there yep and we're gonna drop that pin in there now i'm just gonna hold it here a second for the sake of trying it yep that can't come back out so now what we have to do this roll pin that we pounded out we've got to come back over here and pound it back in to hold that pin in place. All right, so now we have to charge the jackhammer with nitrogen. Now they gave us a tank here. I'm hoping there's nitrogen in it. Um, I assume there is. So here's our little tank with a valve. They did give us a gauge, the hose, a couple of spare O-rings here. And there's a spot right down over here. They gave us this little Allen wrench. And there's a spot right down over here that you have a plug to take out. And I believe that's where the gauge goes in so that you can measure. Now, I don't know. I'm assuming there isn't any nitrogen in this unit. Um, so that has a little O-ring on it. Don't lose that, that little plug. And let's figure out how to do this. Oh, okay, so here's the bottom. Now let's make sure, let's see, that is our, make sure that's closed, make sure that one's closed, make sure they're closed, and then this guy here, okay, that's, that's how you screw it in right there. We'll just snug that up by hand. All right, so this is what we have going on here. This is screwed in here, there's our gauge. So we're going to, we got a hook up here and to our tank here so let me do that and we'll try charging it up here all right so we have our line hooked up to the tank basically we don't have a regulator on our tank so we're just gonna very very lightly crack that open we're gonna go uh, real slow with it and uh, we'll watch that gauge there and see what happens all right guys it's been no oh, close to a week since the last clip of the video um so we tried to fill you know pressurize the jackhammer with the nitrogen and of course the bottle was empty which duh like it makes sense right they're not going to ship it with a bottle full of nitrogen so i took the bottle um i called some places and there's some of the places around here uh, they'd have to send the bottle out to have it filled and whatnot, but they had a bottle in stock. So I went to pick up the bottle and come to find out uh, none of the fittings are the same. These are not American fittings and they are even weird metric fittings. Um, so let me, we, I got it figured out and uh, it, it took running around to, uh, ended up being four places to get this figured out. So let me lay the stuff out here and I'll show you what we came up with to make this work. So just to go over again, the stuff that came with the jackhammer, we have the gauge here and this valve assembly, and they gave you this 
line, this hose, and then you were supposed to connect, you know, one end, whoops, <laughs> one end to there and one end to the tank up here. So the first thing that uh, I found out was that the end on this tank, which is kind of what you'd call the American, is nowhere near the right fitting for that. So tried to find some sort of adapter or something. And again, these are just kind of weird threads. So couldn't, couldn't do that. So uh, that was one trip. So then the next trip, I went to a hydraulic place Then they do all kinds of lines and fittings and things. And uh, so he tried getting me and making up an adapter and he had ordered something, but it was a weird, like I said, weird thread design. So that didn't work out. So what he ended up doing was um, we took the, or he did, I, I had all this stuff with me just in case. So again, this is the bottle that came with the, the hammer. Let me get this off of here. So what he did, this was a, a more standard fitting. This valve was down in this bottle. So he took that out and was able to put uh, an adapter piece on here, which got me one step closer to putting this in here. So then, I had to run and get this bottle and get the adapter piece because they were out of them. They didn't have any more. So the place I went to, I bought this bottle of nitrogen and uh, they sell the fittings I needed, but they were out of them. So I bought the bottle there. That was the third, third place I had gone to, third trip. So finally, I went to another place um, that had the fitting I needed. So this will screw you know, into there and then this goes into here and now whoops is it revert no oh, there it goes okay so then what i can do after i put all that together is then take this fitting on the valve and then go down to there like i'm supposed to so <laughs> this is not ideal i don't recommend this to anybody but it was the fastest way that i could adapt a nitrogen bottle to the weird system that I have to be able to get this uh, jackhammer working. So, um, you know, maybe there's some other fittings out there that would eliminate the second valve here. I don't know. I didn't really care. I'm not going to use this a whole lot, but I just wanted to get the darn thing going. And I was happy that he was able to, between everybody, we were able to figure something out to be able to get this thing moving. So I will have to uh, get, get all this put together. So that was four trips to do that. Now the interesting thing was, um, when I was at the hydraulic place and he took this valve out of the top of this tank, I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Do you see all that crap? that was in the tank. So that really wouldn't have been good anyway. I imagine that crap could have gotten the lines and the valves and everything else. So yeah, that's a lot of fun, but we got it figured out. And now we can go back to uh, putting nitrogen in the hammer. All right, I got the valves and all my bits and pieces on this tank put together. I tightened everything up. I checked it with some soapy water. I did have a little leak, did have to tighten something down. So we got that set. So now we're gonna put this guy, this gauge in here, I think. <laughs> there we go. Hard to get your fingers down in here and I'm trying to, trying to do it so that you, you guys can see it on the camera here. Get that snugged up. And then we gotta take this cap off here so that we can get this end of our hose connected in here. Snug everything down, then we gotta hook this end up to our tank. Or our valve, yeah, valve tank, whatever. Okay, so it's very difficult. It's 223 is what uh, the book says to do. And uh, it's very difficult to see 223 there. So 
Uh, we're just gonna go a couple little lines over the 200. So now we're just gonna very slowly, just super gently crack this tank open and let some nitrogen in there. We're gonna go over, there, we're gonna go over the 200. We're gonna stop. Okay, so now we're gonna release the pressure here. Now we can take our line off here. So we'll take that off and get that out of the way. And we gotta put this cap back on. Snug that down. Okay, so now, I'll turn you guys a little bit here. So now we'll check and see what our, everything's tight here, we'll check and see what our pressure is. Okay, so we're just under 300, so we're just gonna turn this screw here a little bit to get us down closer to, you know, that 223 mark. As best I can tell, we're pretty close. There's not lines on there for like 10, 20, 30, 40. So we're a little bit over the 200, we're like a line and a half. I don't really know exactly, and I don't know if you have to be exact guys I've talked to have said 220 they said if you're a hundred over it won't work right or whatever but we are not obviously a hundred over so I don't think that's gonna matter so now we just uh, we've released that so we take this off bleed the air out of the gauge and uh, we're good to go so hopefully that means we will be ready to give this thing a shot here so we just got to put our uh, little protective plug back in there with our Allen wrench here. Okay, so I think we're pretty much ready to go give this thing a try. It's greased, hooked up the hoses, nitrogen's charged in it, everything's put together. You know, probably after we'll have to check some bolts and things, but I did bring wrenches with me. We're gonna go up to uh, the yard and, and jackhammer work on a stone that sticks up in the yard that you have to mow around. So I grabbed some wrenches and things in case I have any loose connections on my hydraulic hoses because of some of the adapters and things. Um, the only thing I'm not sure of, and I don't know, are you guys gonna be able to read that? Well, you can see the, the word out and the word in. So there obviously is a flow to how this has to work. And I guess what I'm hoping is that one way it just won't work at all and the other way it will work. So in, in my, my machine, there is a, you know auxiliary switch and you can uh, flick it either way. So you can make the flow go one way or you can make it go the other way. So it doesn't really matter how you have the hoses hooked up. But the thing is, I don't know which way to flick the switch. So I'm hoping that, uh, like I said, it won't work the one direction maybe, and it'll work the other way, because if it kind of works both ways, you know, I don't want to screw the thing up. I'm not exactly sure what to do, because like my brush cutter, it'll spin both ways, but you know, it's only meant to cut the one direction, so I have to hold the switch or lock it, uh, you know, one way. So let's take this baby outside, see if it works, see if we have leaks, and see what happens. All right, we made it up to the lawn. In front of you is the rock we're gonna jackhammer. Now, I was able, I was playing with the, here's the toggle switch in here. You can flick it either way and lock it. So I was playing with that a little bit. And if you can see, you can see that hose bounce. That is actually the inside, the side that the flute's supposed to go in. So I figured out I have to flick the switch to the right. So that, that made it easy. So um, yeah, I'm gonna set you guys up outside and we'll see if anything explodes, leaks, works like it's supposed to and go from there. Okay, so it has been hours since that last clip that you saw, and I had to go yet another place. Um, as you could see in the clip, when I went to tip the jackhammer down, 
at least I hope you could see the camera was on the opposite side. These hoses were getting pretty taut and the jackhammer was not vertical yet. So the hoses weren't long enough. Um, so that was fun. So I had to, I took them off just to make sure that we got the right size of everything. Went to local hydraulic shop. They made me these two hoses here that I just, rather than remaking the whole thing, we just, you know, I extended them up and uh yeah so there's a little bit more money we'll go over the total budget everything i spent on this at the end of the video but uh so i had to add i ended up adding three feet i don't think i quite needed three two probably would have been enough to be comfortable but i wasn't sure and i don't want to be making them 800 times so we went with three feet and then i just zip tied this little bungee here um, not that there's going to be pressure on them but uh, the machine was outside and when I just brought it in now the hoses had fallen down underneath there so all I want that bungee to do is keep the hoses up off the ground when I go to set the hammer down so that's all um, so the one good thing that did come of this is when I took off this hose which is the outlet hose I saw there was some oil there that was very milky so either there was oil, some oil in the hammer, or just a lot of moisture that got into the oil. Now, luckily, I hadn't run the hammer. I had just cycled it a little bit. So uh, I, the one hose got drained out. So what I did was I put the inlet hose on. I left this one off, and I ran it a little bit just at idle. And I flushed all that milky oil out of there before I put the hose back on. So I guess there was a positive all that milky oil did end up into my machine. So that's something else to watch for here. I've lost track of how many different things. I'll try and go over them at some point. But I've, you know, there's been a lot of little things about this that, uh, you know, is important information to pass on to you guys. So it is now, if you can see the windows and the garage door, it is dark outside. So I have to wait till tomorrow to try and test this out again. I'll go ahead and throw it on this video just so you get sort of a full closure. But uh, yeah, so that's where we're at for tonight. All right, another day, another try. <laughs> so let's head up here back to that rock where we were and we can actually see if we can try this thing out now that I think I got everything buttoned up where it needs to be. I'm gonna put you outside so you guys can see, but it's windy today, so I apologize if there's any wind noise in the video. Uh, but unfortunately, there's not much I can do about it. So, let's get on up here. We'll get you set up and cross our fingers this thing actually works. had in it so I put a little more 
motor back in there, boosted it back up. We'll see if that works. If not, uh, the thing's broken. I don't know what else to do. So, sorry we're bouncing. I got chains on and uh, they're, they're jouncing us. So let's get back up here and try it. We're back in the shop here again. Uh, <laughs> we headed up that last clip and I forgot to turn the camera back on. It did the same thing. It worked for a couple times and then quit. I just checked the nitrogen pressure. It's fine. So I'm not sure if there's a hydraulic oil flow issue. Um, you can kind of see these guys keep seeping. I got them as tight as they can. I don't know if there's just a pressure issue. So what I'm gonna try to do is change the way that this machine flows the oil into the hammer so uh, like I mentioned I have a toggle switch in there it can go right or left right now I've been flicking it right so what I'm going to do is take these ends off of these lines so I can swap them and that will allow me to flow the pressure the other way um, and then we'll go from there and see if that makes any difference all right I just <laughs> Put the hoses on the end of the bucket, use that as a bench, and uh, swap the fittings around. So those are now opposite. The flow is gonna come from the opposite hose now. It'll still go on in on the inside, but I don't know, I don't know what else to do, so let's just give this a try. All right, I would say third time's the charm, but this is literally probably like the sixth or seventh or eighth time I've tried to attempt to use this thing, and for various reasons we couldn't. So here we go again, change the hydraulic flow. I'm gonna leave the machine idling and uh, we'll see what happens. I think I got three uses out of it once. So let's see what happens. jackhammer because it kind of comes to a peak on the top all right let's see if it's gonna work again that's it bounce off the peak there guys there she is we finally got her working I finished up the rock we started in the video I went on and did another one and even started another one yet um, so I have a little time with it now uh, obviously not much but so I'm sure you guys are wondering how much I paid for this thing so you can see I paid $1,050 for the unit itself now that was at an auction, so I think there was about $100 in auction fees on it. So we're at about $1,150. So then I had to, um, we'll walk you through this here. So we're at $1,150. I had to get the hose extensions made and the two flat face couplers. So I think there's about um, another $150 in there. So what's that, $1,300? If I'm doing my math right, so we're at $1,300. And then I had to get a couple of fittings and that bottle there. So all of that stuff, I did buy the bottle. I'm not renting it. So all the stuff was another 200. So what's that, 1500, I believe. If I did my math right, you guys can correct me down below if I did that wrong. So what started out is thinking I was going to have a 
jackhammer attachment out of the crate, ready to go for you know 1150 bucks, turned into a $1,500 adventure. Now, $1,500 is still really cheap for a skid steer jackhammer. The quality ones out there cost a lot more than that. So, um, you know, but it is what it is, right? So anyway, guys, I think that wraps up this video. I'm running out of time on my SD card here. Um, I want you guys to hit that subscribe button, if you would, please, and the bell icon. That bell icon notifies you of upcoming videos. And if you're interested in this kind of content, uh, equipment running, but specifically this jackhammer attachment, you know, this is not a long-term review by any means. This is just the struggle of getting one of these things working. So if you want to see how long this thing lasts and you want to see it in action some more, that's why you want to hit the subscribe and the bell icon because we're going to be using this a lot and I will show you kind of how long it lasts. Um, and we have a lot of other great equipment videos here. So, you know, like I said, hit the subscribe. And if you wouldn't mind, if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs up, please, on your way out the door. I thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you all in the next video.